Neural venous sinuses, as I said, they are formed between the, uh, the endosteal layer and the meningeal layer of dura mater. So we discussed that already. Endosteal layer and meningeal layer of dura mater. So you can see the endosteal layer here and this is the meningeal layer. So this is the superior sagittal sinus that you can see here. It's the, it's the, it's the main, uh, main dural venous sinus. Then uh, you can also see this is uh, subarachnoid space, subarachnoid space, and you can see uh, the arachnoid granulations, uh, which actually absorb CSF into the uh, dural venous sinus, superior sagittal sinus, uh, and you know this circulation takes place. They are formed at the choroid plexus in the ventricles, and they are absorbed into the superior sagittal sinus through arachnoid granulations. It's a circulation. Okay, uh, then, uh, then this is not the only dural venous sinus. So we said uh, at the top pin, you have this uh, superior sagittal sinus. Then you get the phallic cerebri like this. Then you get the inferior uh, sagittal sinus. So you get your brain here. Okay. And you get your uh, corpus callosum here. You get the anterior cerebral arteries there. Okay, we'll discuss these things. Now, what are the other dural venous sinuses? Okay, now, now you know the superior sagittal sinus and inferior sagittal sinus in relation to the uh, phallic cerebri. Now, here you see the superior sagittal sinus. Then here you see the inferior sagittal uh, sinus. So your corpus callosum will be, uh, if you draw it, you have the, the splenium, you have the body, and the, the, the genu and the rostrum like this. Okay. Uh, so then uh, there are other dural venous sinuses. You can see the superior sagittal sinus continues like this. And here, this is the tentorium cerebelli and it's opening for the brain stem to pass through it. Now along, now if, you, if I draw it here, this is your uh, tentorium cerebelli. Now from the back of the occipital bone over the tentorium cerebelli, Okay, you get another sinus here within the two meningeal layers of dura mater here, which is called the straight sinus. You can see it here, trace straight sinus. Okay, it goes it goes between the uh, the cerebrum above and the cerebellum below. Okay, you can understand that. Then along the the occipital bone here, you get another sinus called uh, transverse sinus. Okay, so this is transverse sinus. Then somewhere here, it becomes a sigmoid sinus. So it's this one, sigmoid sinus. Okay, so it becomes a sigmoid sinus because the shape is like this, okay. So you can, uh, you can uh, see it to some extent here. So this is the sigmoid sinus area, okay. That is the sigmoid sinus in the, the base of the, uh, close to the base of the skull actually. And here you get the, um, Jugular foramen. Jugular foramen. Sigmoid sinus leaves the cranial cavity through the jugular foramen and it becomes the internal jugular vein. Internal jugular vein. And when it leaves through the, uh, the jugular foramen, uh, there are three nerves also leaving with it. What are the three nerves? Ninth, tenth, and eleventh. It's, uh, it's glossopharyngeal. Nerve, then vagus nerve and the accessory nerve. They also leave with the internal jugular vein uh, through the uh, jugular foramen. Then, you know, coming back to the dural venous sinuses again. So, you know the superior sagittal sinus, you know the inferior sagittal sinus, straight sinus, transverse sinus, and sigmoid sinus already. Uh, then you can see a few other sinuses. Now, uh, when the tentorium cerebelli is getting attached to the petrous temporal bone here, Again, it gets separated out uh, and forms a uh, sinus, small one, which is called superior petrosal sinus. Okay, you can see it here, superior petrosal sinus. Then there's a very small one here also, the same thing happened, which is called the inferior petrosal sinus. That opens into sigmoid sinus. Okay, inferior petrosal sinus. Then here, in this area, it gets separated out again and forms what is called sphenoparietal sinus. Okay, sphenoparietal sinus, this one. And here, the most important sinus is the cavernous sinus. Okay, again, 
the layers separate out and uh, you you have the, uh, the cavernous sinus on either side of the pituitary fossa here in the sphenoid uh, body of the sphenoid bone and this cavernous sinus here so you get cavernous sinus on the two sides on either side of the pituitary fossa then these two sinuses are connected up anterior and posterior to the pituitary uh, fossa and this uh, the connection up is the connecting up sinus is called the intercavernous sinus okay so cavernous sinus here and these are anterior and posterior intercavernous sinuses so it's a lot of uh, dural venous sinuses okay and there's another one that is not there in the picture there's a small sinus continuing and stopping here so here if i draw it so you get the transverse sinuses like this okay and to some extent you get sinus like this which is called occipital sinus if you check your grant's uh, atlas uh, they have drawn it okay occipital sinus so then uh, uh, the the drainage the venous drainage of the substance of the brain the brain has to drain its blood somewhere they drain into these dural venous sinuses especially the superior sagittal sinus and even the inferior sagittal sinus okay so it's the, uh, the, the there are you know intracranial extracerebral structures okay which are not uh, non neural structures inside the cranial cavity and even the eyeball you have the eyeball in the orbit uh, they drain into these uh, the, the dural venous sinuses okay so your orbit here uh, structures drain into the cavernous sinus through ophthalmic veins like that okay uh, and the brain also drains into the um, dural venous sinuses so remember that point uh, because later this drainage uh, into the, uh, the dural venous sinuses, the, the veins from the brain becomes important. This is, uh, this is cavernous sinus, okay, and this is uh, intercavernous sinus, anterior intercavernous sinus and posterior intercavernous sinus. Okay, so this posterior and anterior intercavernous sinus, these two are cavernous sinuses. You can see uh, the ophthalmic vein which drains the, uh, the orbit. Uh, which drains into the uh, the cavernous sinus. Then uh, all this connection, I think you can understand now. You have the superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, now straight sinus, and this is transverse sinus, and this is sigmoid sinus. This area is sigmoid sinus, and this is internal jugular vein on either side. Okay. Uh, so then you have the superior petrosal, inferior petrosal, all the other sinuses. Then the other point that I wanted to raise here is this point. Okay. We'll go by this diagram. Now, if you take the uh, 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 coronal section of the head again, you see the scalp outside, you see the scalp here, and you see uh, extracranial veins in the scalp layer. You get extracranial veins in the layer of the scalp. Uh, then this is the, the dural venous sinuses, in this case, the superior sagittal sinus. You can see a, a, a vein, type of veins called emissary veins, connecting up the extracranial veins to dural venous sinuses okay so there uh, a connection exists so uh, usually they don't uh, exchange blood uh, but but they can they can drain if there's a, an infection here and if the the other drainage gets blocked there's a possibility that blood can drain into this with infection and you can infect the sinus okay so it's more common it's more likely to happen especially when there's infection of the eyeball uh, and the extraocular structures, infection can spread uh, through the ophthalmic veins into the cavernous sinus, and you can cause cavernous sinus thrombosis, which is a very serious condition. Cavernous sinus thrombosis. Okay, um, and and there are connections. You know, there are facial veins getting connected to uh, the the cavernous sinus uh, through the deep facial vein uh, and the pterygoid venous plexus. I think you have uh, heard about it, the danger area of the face and all. Um, so remember this point also when you learn the dural venous sinuses, they are connected up with the uh, uh, extracranial veins through emissary veins. Don't forget that fact. Okay. And the other point that I want to raise here was that now you have cerebral veins, cerebral veins uh, draining into the uh, sorry, cerebral veins draining into the superior. Now imagine the cerebral vein draining into the uh, superior sagittal sinus. Now the veins, once they leave uh, the surface of the brain, when they pass through the pyometer, 
they have to cross the subarachnoid space okay and the potential space between the arachnoid mater and dura mater which is here subdural space subdural space before they enter the uh, superior sagittal sinus now the issue here is uh, there is a possibility if the brain is shrinked for some reason if the brain is shrinked okay and the gaps are more here and and especially the gap here the potential space can open up the subdural space then the vein when they cross this space okay these are called bridging veins okay bridging veins because they bridge the uh, the dural venous sinus and the brain the bridging veins when they when they pass through the uh, the, the subarachnoid space and subdural space uh, where if the brain shakes inside the cranial cavity if the brain is smaller than usual uh, the veins can break and bleed into these spaces we'll discuss that when we discuss the intracranial hemorrhages okay